Welcome to the... <laughs> Sometimes I start this so awkwardly. Welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I'm so excited for today's guests. We have Corey and Margaret from A Pretty Cool Hotel Tour on. You guys have such a cool Instagram. I came across your page. Um, I'm obsessed with theme motel rooms, hotel rooms. Would you say that was the initial focus of what you guys did and then it kind of expanded? Yeah, I think I that's that's what first caught our eyes. Like, whoa, I didn't know there were weird, cool theme hotels out there. And so that's definitely what started us searching everywhere across the country. Like, where else are they? And then, of course, we like kind of expanded the category to like any kind of like romantic or adult hotel. Mm-hmm. But yeah, theme hotels are where we really started. Yeah, I I love. Yeah, I I'm from New York and I became obsessed with like the idea of theme hotel rooms because for me it was like initially and sorry to start like this off the top but for me it was initially like a fun sex thing totally like I feel like that's how people get into it and then they're like oh wait there's so much more to this and it's so fun to like explore and travel around but I remember I was like trying to google like fun places to have sex or something with like a guy I had been dating and then I came across that um Paris one in New York by the airport oh yeah yeah. because I think I remember I actually saw you guys went there too the it's like twa this, one or the it says paris on a sign it's like on the way to jfk and it's like this weird sketchy is it, i'm trying to think if it's the gallery holiday one there that area is full of like yeah kind of hourly rental right like straight up places. like probably like prostitute like like i'm sure that's like a lot of i mean i think that's <laughs> that's like what at first people were like why are you going to places that are for like under the table like transactions and i'm like so well, is like some of these places they can too, right and like yeah. they might not be like they might not feel like that's a I don't know. I guess for me, I also felt the same where like we both were raised very religious and I had all sorts of trauma coming into our very young marriage of like what sex was and actually supposed to be. And then like getting away from that religion, I was like, it sucks that sex was never fun for me. It was always like a duty. And so Mm -hmm. I literally was like Mm -hmm. learning about these rooms and was like, that would actually be cool to kind of take that approach that feels less, I don't know, weird and religious and turn it into something fun Mm -hmm. so like yeah we definitely got a lot of messages early on that were like do you know these rooms are for sex oh you guys probably don't know this but those rooms are for sex and I was like no yeah that's why we're here (laughs) (laughs) well I feel like that's like initially sometimes like how it brings you into that world and then it's just like oh my god this is so fucking cool yeah and then I was like looking on all um I was googling like theme hotel rooms and it just opens up so much once you start to learn about that world and that's how I found Madonna and we and I ended up getting married there oh cool yeah um so like I just love yeah, I just love it. Um, yeah. And so I want to hear about you guys um, separately coming together as a couple. And then like, we'll kind of just get into what your journey has been like. Um, and with like building your Instagram and all the work that you do. So yeah, let's start like where you're from. And you said you had a young marriage. So yeah, we we got married 11 years ago now. So it's 2011. Um, <clears throat> but we I, both grew up in the Midwest. Yeah, so both grew up in the Midwest. Very I grew up similar. a suburb outside of Chicago called Crystal Lake, Illinois. Uh, and we ended up going to like a Baptist college together. Mm. And that's where we met each other. Uh, Wait, what religion is that? It's like a, a version of Christianity, oh, yeah, evangelicalism. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Christian. Um, so yeah, we, we met there uh, and started dating for a couple of years and then uh, got married when I was 23. She was 21 at the time. And I uh, wouldn't recommend getting that young to most people. <laughs> getting that, married that young. Yeah, yeah, getting married that young. But that's like a, um, but wait. <laughs> okay, I don't want, but then I was going to be like, did you have to wait to have sex before marriage? Uh, but then I'm like, why am I asking that? So no, that I that's a, I mean, a very valid no, question. I think I still have trauma from that yeah. time because I, I went through the realization after we got married because we did wait to have sex. Okay. of being like, whoa, I didn't get to choose when I had sex like my mm. parents did. They were so heavy handed on us. Like we couldn't have sleepovers. They were like, where are you? Checking mm-hmm. in on us every night, making sure we weren't like spending the night together. And so after getting married, even though I I chose to get married and I chose you, I was like mad later that I was like, ew, I don't like that 
our parents were like, okay, go, now you can do it. And we were like, okay, we're doing it. And it's for like this weird thing that was handed to us. Like later, I again, that's kind of why I'm doing this work to kind of get rid of that because Mm. I didn't like the sense that Mm -hmm. I didn't really feel like it was our choice that we waited. I felt like we were very like protected mm-hmm. from going there so yeah that's yeah. interesting yeah it reminds me of when the jonas brothers had those rings totally. yeah. what were they called again purity ring yes. yeah purity oh yeah, ring. It, yeah. that was kind of during ring. that time oh right? yeah i love you had Jonas one. Oh, we both did yeah he had, a, yeah. Laminate, yeah. Look he had like. a laminated virginity card that i got a laminated <laughs> virginity card so that she is so interesting so is that something that comes from the church i mean yeah i think mine came from like wait laminated summer camp the fact that it was laminated yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, no, I, yeah. I mean, I, like amazing. in college, my lanyard that I like had my keys and everything on literally said "sex can wait," and it like wasn't a joke. It wow. was like no, that was like half my personality because yeah. that's what in that church sect, whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of what they give women as the personality until they're married is just like waiting. Yeah. So, yeah. so and then did you go to the same school? College. For college. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And what college was that again? It was called Judson College. Judson. Yeah. And that was in Chicago, uh, Illinois? Chicago land area, yeah. Okay, cool. So then, and w- that was a religious college. Mm-hmm. So you guys, and sorry, just to reiterate, totally. so you met there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then when you guys met and liked each other, how involved were your families during that process? I feel like the reason I still can like you is because our families <laughs> weren't that excited about us being together. Oh, really? So instead of everything else in my life that I feel that I later looked back and felt like, whoa, I was really forced into that. Mm. For this, I was like, oh man, my family's kind of disappointed we're getting married. That's probably good for me. Like, it's probably <laughs> yeah. good. Like, I don't, like, besides the fact that they were very excited we were getting married because it meant we were less likely to ever have sex not married, which was their main concern mm-hmm. in life for me. I think, like, Looking back, I think it was so good for me to find something that I liked and that it wasn't something they were really excited about. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, we're both kind of weirdos in our own way. So our yeah. family saw the other person and was like, I don't know about them. And that ended up being good. Mm-hmm. So it's been like a journey with finding like your own identity. Yeah. And yeah. do you feel like that was something that you can only really do once you got married and started to get like your own sort of like separation from your family? Yeah, I feel like at least for me, again, I I'm someone I'm a people pleaser. I like really want to do the right thing. And so growing up in that environment, like I wasn't really encouraged to figure out what I wanted. So I was just focused on like doing the right thing. And then because he fit into the category of like, well, I am supposed to get married and he is supposed to be this Christian who's never had sex and is whatever like this box. I can like that works. I can do that. But then after we got married, he started being like, like just questioning my beliefs more. Mm. And I was like, you're supposed to be encouraging my beliefs. And he was like, I'm not supposed to do anything. Like he was just the one who was more. Leading me astray. <laughs> did you watch Under the Banner of Heaven? Yes, I did. I don't think you did. No, I haven't. I also grew up a little bit more, uh, I don't know what the word is, more maybe conservative because you were like both very religious families, but he like went to public school for a while and like I was homeschooled and at least when oh, I was the whole really time? young, up until my last two years of high school. And so I think... As much as my parents hate to hear us talk about it now, they went through a really intense, like, kind of fundamentalist time when mm-hmm. I was, like, really little where we were, like, you know, making our own clothes and, like, yeah. women, like, weren't supposed to cut their hair. And so, like, watching that, I was, like, I know a lot of people who are still kind of in Really? That. It's so interesting. Especially, yeah. like, those fundamentalist communities that still exist today that are probably just like off totally somewhere off like yeah off the grid it's yeah. yeah i found that so fascinating yeah so i think it's been kind of this journey where now it's funny because like we're in la more often people who know us here are kind of like oh that's adorable this married couple is like going to these hotels and like there's nothing very edgy about it and then i feel like at home it's still very like Oh, like maybe don't talk about what they do. I'm like, that's so but interesting. Why? Like, it, it's just an interesting, no matter where we are, it feels like there's, yeah, there's that kind of dynamic. Somewhere so, between. how did you guys get into the whole hotel thing then? <laughs> well, I feel like it started because we were, we were traveling a lot shooting for work because we were running our own production company at the time. Oh, okay. Shooting different video or photo projects, kind of traveling all over the mm-hmm. place. So what were you guys, you had your own production company. Mm-hmm. Did you um, 
what space did you work in? Uh, usually doing like social type stuff, uh, small commercial, okay. sometimes documentary type. It was kind of just whatever, mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever was working at the time. So uh, with those combinations of things, you then were interested in just since we were traveling, you wanted to stay somewhere a little more interesting than just staying in a normal hotel. Yeah. And so that's when we kind of started seeing some of those places in sort of the different areas of the U.S. And and yeah, yeah I think also I was really itching to come up with a project we could do without someone else telling us what we had to do because obviously mm-hmm. all the commercial work we were doing everyone gives you the notes they give you the mood board they give you everything and I was like we need to find something that we can just see what we would make if no one else was telling us what to do mm-hmm. and so it, yeah and some of those trips I was like let's just stay somewhere a little more interesting see what we can find we had already learned about the Madonna Inn so I was already like okay yeah. I know there are cool hotels out there and then we were in New York this was like four years ago I think mm-hmm. um we first stayed at the old Poconos Resorts near New York, mm-hmm. like two hours from there. Wait, like, is that the one with the big champagne glass? Yeah. yeah I've always wanted yeah. to stay there, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The coolest yeah. hotel. And that immediately, after discovering that, and back then, I had never heard of it, didn't know that existed. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen it on the internet, never heard of it. So, so it, how did you it, come across it? Well, we actually just went because we heard there was a heart-shaped tub there. Yeah, I was like, yes. let's just go see Love. the heart-shaped tub. Mm-hmm. And then when we got there, it's a whole resort, and that they're like they still look very seventies. So the bar is like this giant heart that's red with like gold on the ceiling, and I was like whoa, how do I not know about this? This seems like something we would love. Why is no one telling us you should go here? And then once we started going and, and posting about it, a few people were like, oh, my my parents went here for their honeymoon. Yeah. Or like, oh, my gosh, my grandparents used to go there. So, like, it, I learned that people were aware of it, but it just wasn't very relevant at the time. And after that, I was just pretty addicted to googling every other state to see like is there anything weird and cool Mm -hmm. that's like especially in the adult space one because I was very much working through my my issues yeah and two because we don't have kids and so we spend a lot of time with our families who have a lot of kids and when we're vacationing or we're traveling we don't really want to be in the spaces that are just like overwhelmed with children totally yeah yeah yeah. screaming or yeah they can have a great time in a lot of places but like we want to find the places that there aren't as many children. Yeah, I feel like that's like the worst thing when you go to a hotel and you want to just hang out by the pool and there's all these screaming kids yeah, there. Yeah, they're totally. splashing you and they're, and they're just, just like, like shut up. Like, yeah. So like we, <laughs> at, some people will get offended and be like, how come you're only showing places where children are really? welcome? Yeah. And I'm oh, like, that's so because funny. Because that's literally what we're doing. Mostly yeah. on TikTok, I feel like people get mad and I'm like, that's not what we're it's doing. It's probably the children that are on TikTok. <laughs> they want to know where oh, they can go. So One of my true. favorite comments on TikTok is always when someone tags someone else and says, when we get to be adults, like we have to go here. Oh, like, that's so cute. <laughs> I know. So yeah, I think back then, like when we first started traveling, I again as like someone who was more not trying to be like an influencer or content creator, mm-hmm. I was very like, I don't want to do anything where I'm on camera, but like I really want to shoot these spaces. And the more we were going, the more Corey was encouraging me to like maybe just get over it and like do something because these are cool places. Mm-hmm. No one else is here. God, you should a cool post pick. about them. Yeah. Like get something. And so he like encouraged that mm-hmm. to, for me instead of being too good for it to be like, all right, I'll try to do it myself. And like also back then I was like desperately trying to get models to like meet us at the places because I was like, I will shoot these amazing photos. Yeah. Because that's what I did. I was a photographer. But every time either things fell through or, like, we didn't have any budget and it was always just, like, really disheartening mm-hmm. that we couldn't get someone to meet us. But I also get it. It's, like, in the middle of some weird state and they're, like, I'm not coming to meet a stranger in the middle of some weird town at a sex hotel. But for me, I was, like, no, but you don't understand. These places are beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah, that kind of pushed us to, like, get in front of the camera, too, and be, like, mm-hmm. make it more of a, a personal, I don't know, project in that way. Yeah. So what year did this start around? The first time we went to the Poconos was 2018, mm-hmm. like May of 2018. And that's when we were like, okay, maybe we need to mm-hmm. do something more. So, And that's interesting because I feel like it, it was already sort of like popular in different pockets. Like mm-hmm. in L.A., like I could see that just being like a place like, oh, photographers are going to love to do shoots there and right. stuff. But like it's interesting because in like a smaller town in Illinois, like that's looked at as something that's like... um 
you know, inappropriate or something. And then like, uh, yeah. And then like, I don't know, in Nashville, it might be like cool and trendy, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's just so interesting how the different viewpoints are globally. Totally. Uh, Yeah. It's been interesting traveling across the U.S. and just being like, how is this all one country? Every Mm. state feels so different. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it kind of blows my mind. And some of the places we find the most amounts of these hotels is in the Midwest and like in uh, like very Mormon areas of like the oh. Rockies and Utah. So like, it's really interesting what the- It's like the, where they sneak off to. Yeah, such a wide range of demographic that it appeals to. Yeah, yeah. that's so interesting. I feel like a lot of it too is like when- people had told me like they hadn't been to the Madonna Inn but like when they were kids they would drive past Mm -hmm. there on road trips with their families and I feel like a lot of those hotels kind of serve like that like families just going there and like ending up like oh that was a weird place we stayed at you know but like not intentionally going so I feel like there's like both of that oh yeah the intention and just the kind of ramness of like a roadside stop on like a trip and then it just being like a room with mirrors all over the ceilings. So. Yeah. <laughs> like it is funny to get those people who say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm seeing this online. When my family was road tripping, we yeah. happened to stay there 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. This is so funny. And I just think, I mean, I get it. It's a motel. Mm-hmm. They have no rooms available except those. So you're going to take it. And then it's like a weird experience. Yeah. And I feel like some of those places, I mean, it's the outdatedness that makes it so cool mm-hmm. and like incredible, but it's not even something that they were trying to do. Like, I know. I always say love that they weren't made for the Internet. Yeah. They were just made to enjoy. Yeah. Like, I'm sure rooms. some of them are obviously, like, trying to be more stylish and cool. But, like, a lot of these places just have, like, all red floral wall print and then, like, a red bedspread. And, like, that's, like, oh, that's an incredible photo, like, mm-hmm. a great framing, but not at all what they were trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting to see. Also, like, some of the places we go to are a little more modern and might have an Instagram, and then some haven't updated their website in a long time and aren't really online, and they'll kind of be like, like, we'll ask for a tour, and sometimes they'll say, sure, here's a key, and sometimes they'll say, okay, I'll show you a couple, and especially when it's somebody who either owns it or has worked there for a long time, sometimes they're, like, shocked that we're so excited, but I'm like, I don't think you understand what, like... What it means to us to have you open this door and see a room that looks like it was decorated in the 80s and then no one touched it. Like, that's gold to us. So mm-hmm. sometimes they'll be like, really? really? And then they'll get a little more excited to show us more because we are genuinely, genuinely just excited to see what details still exist and totally. like, are still usable. I know. It's so cool. Um have you ever been to Cardiff by the Sea Lodge? No, but I, I've heard that it's amazing. It's it's cute. It's like it's one of those like not trying to be like just definitely like an outdated place, like very like 80s. They have this really cute room. Um, sometimes my husband and I stay there um, just because it's like a cooler, more fun spot. You know, yeah. we'd rather stay in a place like that. And they just have like a room with like a round bed. And I'm like tracing around <laughs> and like, you know, tons of mirrors. And it's very just like 80s, like art deco, yeah. like Miami Vice, it's like so Wall fun. Street, like just like it's just so fucking cool. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. And they're like, uh, yeah, just like turn yeah. the box, like leave the key outside when you're done. Yeah. Like what? They I don't even get it. I know. And it is. It just it feels like you're in a movie a little bit. I just watched Scarface for the first time this year. Yeah. And I'm like obsessed because I'm like, yeah, this is the style I love, mm-hmm. which you don't see at least at a budget hotel these days. And it's cool to, yeah, walk into a room and kind of see that that for that price, especially because I'm sure in like really nice, you know, really nice hotels with high roller suites and all that they might you know decorate kind Mm -hmm. of like that but for two people especially five years ago who were like okay we have two hundred dollars where do we want to go it was Mm -hmm. really cool to find spaces like that yeah and they're it's interesting because some of those places are affordable but other hotels like that have caught on and know that it's become a thing and have jacked up their prices too totally which is interesting to see yeah do you feel like that's more in like um like california and new york versus midwest like in terms of pricing that sounds right Yeah, yeah i think so i think yeah i mean we just stayed at a couple in the midwest and i was shocked that it was still under $200 because especially if there's like a multi multi level weird cool shaped bed and a big tub I'm like ooh 
weird to see it that cheap. So yeah, I think any big city now is realizing that more and more people are going to book. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you go to middle America, if you have that kind of time, yeah, yeah, I think they still are pretty cheap. So what's your research like? Like, how do you find the places that you're going to go to? And what's your schedule look like? How do you plan things out? Like, do Great you? Great question. Yeah. Should we get out our calendar? Real quick? Yes. <laughs> yes. I am interested. It's a mess. Like, I I feel like for the, at least okay. So at first we were really good about scheduling around if we had a work trip. So if we had a work trip to New York, I was like, great, we'll spend two extra nights, find a couple places to go, and that way, like, the flights are paid for, and it's like a cheaper thing. But then the bigger the project grew, even though we weren't making more money yet because we weren't making any money off of it, my, like, brain grew to be like, wait, if we can go to this other place, like, I know we'll kind mm-hmm. of keep getting traction. And so then we started just being like, okay, we have a weekend off. Let's fly to Kentucky and go to that hotel. And mm. then I'm like, that's awesome and it's great. And then I also look back and laugh because I'm like, you know, we spend a lot of money going to ve- these, like, weird places. But at the same time, now it's turned into this bigger thing where – we are kind of documenting this weird specific niche and like vintage Americana mm-hmm. that's still left over. And so now our schedule is more, well, first we try to figure out where we want to go next, so like maybe a state or um, I think we've been to like 25 to 30 states and I'd love to get to all 50. So now I'm like, okay, we've never been to these three states and they're all near each other. So we look at how can we get a sponsorship that might send us there and then we can broaden it to find more hotels mm-hmm. there and drive around for two weeks. So we, That's like, so fun. So, so like that. Vacation, right, is one of your sponsors? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that, am yeah. I saying it correctly? Vacation, yeah. Okay. The sunscreen. Yeah. yeah. They they were uh, a brand we worked with earlier in the year. And they were kind of the, the beginning of us being like, you know what? Maybe we should try to get sponsors and like do this full time instead of last summer when we were traveling and, and doing the tour – it was all just like on our off days. So I'm up half the night. He's up half the night. We're working on our real work that like pays money mm. while we're also traveling in the middle of nowhere and like trying to get Wi-Fi. And it like was really, really stressful. Yeah. So this summer, um, I think January is when we worked with Vacation. And they were the first to be like, okay, let's put together a trip that makes sense for us. But wherever you guys still want to go. And so, yeah, I think we're trying to do more of that now where we find a sponsor that still aligns with what we want to do mm-hmm. and isn't afraid if we want to do – adult hotels and we want to do something that might be like edgy and like we just worked with best western and i was really glad that we got to work with a bigger hotel brand that even though they were like we don't want to see anything sexy in your content for us they they were still okay with us still you know posting whatever we wanted Mm -hmm. before and after them oh yeah yeah sometimes hotels are a little more like oh we're more family friendly we don't want to work with you because you seem too adult kind of niche but, yeah, now we're trying to find those types of sponsorships that just make sense for what we're doing. And yeah. it's a weird, unknown schedule. No one ever knows when they'll ever see us again. We never know if we're ever going to be home or not. Like, it's it's weird. Yeah, I feel like I've also seen, like, for example, with Best Western, like, we all have our idea about, like, Best Western being, like, this corporate or not. Well, somewhat, yeah. right? Like, um, sort of, like, brand. And then... uh some of their middle America spots, I think that's where they were. I mean, I've seen some that you guys posted, like they happen to be best Westerns, but they look like a, like you wouldn't expect that. Right. I feel like I've Mm -hmm. seen you guys post stuff like that. Yeah. There's, there's one in Illinois in best for best Western. There's one that we just went to in Canada. Uh, and then there's one in Missouri. Yeah. But they're all like um, independently operated too. Mm. It's like it's the managers that are the owners that are making the decisions to you know, make their suites into fantasy rooms. Right. But they still oh, have. Fantasy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they still have the like corporate list of things that they, has, they have to have in the room. So when we toured yeah. the one in Canada and they're amazing theme suites, like some of the best we've ever seen. But there's still a desk with like a rolling desk chair. And we're like, that's <laughs> funny. You have a spaceship bed that's massive and then you have a desk with a chair. And he that's was like, so he funny. Was like, yeah, we got in huge trouble for not having a desk with like a desk chair. We had to have that. So even though they're theme rooms, they still have to have their like best Western checklist. And we were like, oh, that's funny. That's so interesting. Yeah. I never, Who's they're like, we have to have the plastic desk. card that folds yeah, like this totally. with, and lists all the yeah. channels. Yes, they did. The same like little But you can have out. a heart-shaped tub. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that makes sense, I guess. But 
I guess they want to know that their customers who are loyal to Best Western mm. know that they're going to have a desk next to the spaceship. What are some? Of, that's so cool, a spaceship bed. What are the some of the most interesting rooms you've seen? Hmm. I mean, the champagne glass tub is always going to be like probably one of my favorites, just because what a perfect thing. It, and there's a, a really elaborate shell bed at this hotel in Idaho called the Black Swan Inn. That's definitely one of our personal favorites. We've gone back there several times. times now. Yeah. And like the couple who owns it are just like the creators too. So they talk about like how they made mm. the bed and they paint all the murals and they're adorable. They pr- And I'm sure since they do it themselves, they really appreciate your excitement. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Because they, so... they made it for people yeah. like you yeah. who are going to appreciate it. Yeah. So they're that, that one we've definitely gone back to. There's also a, a large um, shower in Utah that's like, I think it's a dragon, but it's like what? like life size dragon with like water coming out its mouth. It's it's a weird. It's definitely That's so strange. It's just, <laughs> again it's like who thought of this yeah. and put in a lot of time and money <laughs> and then put it in a room and didn't really advertise it. Like it just <laughs> we stayed at the hotel 3 times before I even knew that it existed there. And that they knew why so we were funny. there. I was like who who's, who didn't mention the dragon shower? It's like not even on the website. No, no, I mean like they obviously we put photo. so much into it. Yeah, like again it's like that's part of the excitement is just finding these amazing things that, again, we had gone there before and said, we're looking for your cool rooms. We want to see these rooms and photograph them. To have them not even mention something that weird was like, what do you guys think we're looking for? I don't know. I think that was a really fun one to find. Also, it was like recent. So that feels pretty exciting. But yeah, I think the space rooms, too, are always cool if they go all out. Because besides the no windows thing, which can get a little mm-hmm. dark and scary. How do you get to choose the rooms you want? So do you call ahead of time and tell them that you're going to be coming and you want to, like, what do you ask for specifically? Yeah, I definitely try to get a hold of them ahead of time because we always want to get a tour. Like, Mm -hmm. we'd love to see all the rooms that they'll let us. But because, again, half these places are kind of, like, off-grid, not very easy to get a hold of. A lot of time we can't get a hold of the owner before we get there. And so we end up just booking a room. And then when we get there, we'll say, like, can we see more? And then, like, only a couple times, but now that we've been to so many, that's too many times. But we let's say we go somewhere really far away. Like, if we go all the way to Iowa to go to a hotel and they're really sticklers about, like, you're not going to see extra rooms unless mm-hmm. you pay, I'll straight up just be like, okay, we're going to pay 500 more dollars and see the rooms because I came all the way here. Yeah. And then I'll forever be mad at them for that. But also, like, we've done it because, Mm -hmm. again, when we were doing this project, I was just trying to figure out, like, what's the most cost effective way to do this? But also, like, if we go all the way half across the country, like, are we really just going to see one room or are we going to just pay more and see more? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Is that usually the case? I think just starting this year, people have been a little more receptive to, like, showing us more because we have more to show them Mm, mm -hmm. so i don't know how often now i mean now it's still hard to get a hold of people before we get there for some reason like people are are just a lot of weird people yeah they're they're just not easy to get a hold of but now people again like i think especially because now i'll just pull up our instagram and be like Mm -hmm. this is what we do here's a hotel that we just went to this is what we'd love to give you then they're more likely to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll try to show you a couple. And sometimes it's, it's funny. People probably still don't get it too, right? Oh, absolutely. At those like mom and pop yeah. kind of spots. And I'm like, this is how many followers we'll see you and hopefully when I come here. And they're like, I mean, okay, like, is that supposed to mean something to me? And I'm like, yes, it's supposed to mean yeah, something. Yeah, they're like, yeah, there's a weird shower. Yeah, or they'll be like, so well, what? we already have photos of it. So like, that's fine. And I'm like, no, your photos <laughs> are really bad and yeah. old. Like, I'd love to give you these free things because obviously again coming from this the world of like doing advertising photos and video we know what it's worth to have people come in with professional equipment and want to shoot the space so i'm here to be like we want to gift you with these photos and these videos and they're like i mean even if i send them they're like not even gonna open the email so like really yeah like and again now there are some that are more getting on board and getting instagram and, and all that but we still run across the the people who just aren't fully understanding. Yeah. I've had that issue too where they're always like, oh, the room's taken or like, you know, you can't see other rooms. So what I've done is I'll just sneak into them just to look like when the, like when, the when you see the cleaning? carts. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. I've snuck into a room too and had sex in it 
while it was just open to being cleaned. It was open being cleaned and Where? um at Cardiff by the Sea Lodge. Good which was you. crazy. Good yeah. Actually, my husband and I, we were like, oh, could we just like um take a quick picture in this room? Because it was like a really cute room. And then they're like, yeah, sure. So we went in because we stayed there a lot. So we snuck in there. We had sex in there. And our dog was in the room, too, running around. Oh, And I was pregnant. Gosh. It was like cra- it was like a whole crazy thing. And we're like, we can't believe we got away with this. And we, like, used the dirty towel. and like, Oh, threw- <laughs> my Like, gosh. added one of the towels to the floor, you know? Wow. Well, good for you. you yeah. Know how to make I didn't mean most. to say we used the dirty towel. I meant we <laughs> made the towel dirty, and, but you which left wasn't it our so towel. But you to clean it. Yeah. yeah. Wow, good for you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think sneaking in while the cart's around is like the best way to go. Oh, for sure. Oh, but yeah. then again, it's yeah. not always going to be presentable for you guys right. to take yeah. a photo. So. That's why every once in a while, if they say no, I'm like, well, we're still going to walk around in the morning and peek in. But like, yes, the bed will may be messed up. Yeah. All that. But also sometimes the maids are super nice mm-hmm. and friendly when mm-hmm. I say, hey, we just stayed in that room. We're obsessed. We'd love to see more. Do you mind like showing us a couple? And sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll show yeah. you my favorite five. And I'm like, great. Oh, and then cool. they do. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I also was a maid at a Super 8 for a while when I was younger. And so I feel like I always have uh, a place in my heart for people who have to clean hotel rooms because it sucks. Tell so, me about that. I mean, <laughs> I want to know what it was like cleaning the rooms and like how much they actually do because I'm such a hypochondriac I inspect the sheets like I mean you should (laughs) they don't I feel like they never change them how often do you think they're changing them I mean we change the sheets every night but definitely not the blankets like not the not the top yeah you always take off the top like walk us through how we should handle a hotel room I mean it depends on, on how how afraid you are of germs but I do feel like I usually keep my shoes on now. Just no. Really? Else. I mean, I, I, <laughs> at least I bring slippers because yeah. I want to wear something because it just now it feels kind of gross to me to walk around. But you, I mean, this man. Oh my God. I didn't. He will that. take a nap straight on the floor, like naked, no <laughs> care in the world. <laughs> I, very... I didn't learn to use sheets until we were married. I Wait, didn't, oh, I didn't as know a guy. that's what you were supposed to do. <laughs> Like when I was in college, I slept with a bare mattress and just a blanket. And like, that's what I thought was normal. And it wasn't until we were married that you were like, oh, no, that like this. Sheets clean go this on the bed. And this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, these are new problems. I didn't know I needed to. That's be concerned so funny. About. I, that's such a guy thing. I feel yeah. like all guys are like that until yeah. they get married. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, I didn't know what the top sheet was yeah. for. I like sheets Not now. Even. Let me be clear. I'm, I'm very pro sheet. <laughs> yeah. But for a while you were like. Oh, we have to change the sheets now? Like after a couple months? And I'd be like, no, like you have mm-hmm. to change them frequently. Like that's the thing. He was very surprised. So yeah. what about those more um sketchier, like hourly spots? Like yeah. are you just going in and taking pictures or are you staying in those spots? It kind of just depends on how And it then feels how does the sleep there. work? Yeah. And like what about getting in those tubs? This, oh, I this is what I keeps just, me up. I clean the tubs. You like, do? Yeah. I I Okay, so I even asked, so my brother's a doctor. I've asked him a lot of medical questions about, like, what should I actually be concerned about? Because, like, we're going to some of these rooms that I know that, of course, there's all sorts of activity in there that could leave bodily yeah, fluids Yeah, monkey everywhere. pox like, what everywhere. What do I need to worry about? And he was saying, like, honestly, you're filling a tub with hot water and soap. How likely is it that you're going to get something from that? Very unlikely. Mm. But if you're worried about something that could be really bad, like, of course, you can bring a, a disinfectant and, like, wipe it down. And so I'll usually just bring, like, a disinfectant and wipe everything down. You're talking wipes, Clorox wipes. Whatever. Depends on if we flew or if we, like, drove. Um, mm-hmm. If we drive, I just bring, like, a spray that mm-hmm. I can soak the tub and then either rinse it or wipe it out. So is that then... the first thing you do when you got there? Um, I'll check the mattress first because, like, if there are going to be signs of bed bugs, I immediately will say, <gasps> we're leaving our stuff in the car. We're just going to photograph. Have and you if- seen that before? I've, I haven't seen live bed bugs at a hotel, but if we walk in and it's it's dirty enough that I don't even want to sleep there anyway, we'll like not look. But we've only we've only seen bed bugs in an apartment, um, not at a hotel. But I don't think that we would like we we just don't want to risk it, even if it like cause so signs might just be that there are like little blood stains. So we've seen little blood stains like around the bed. Yeah. And if I see that, I'm like I don't really want to risk like whether or not they were really careful to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. So. 
basically, I mean, sometimes I'll post like a video of like, look what we found. Like, this is the bed. This is the tub. And people would be like, oh, my gosh, those stains are disgusting. And I'm like, yeah, like I agree. I didn't sleep there. But at the same time, that doesn't scare me to like photograph the room. And yeah, that. totally. Like, it's it might not be super clean. But I, yeah, it's it just depends on the vibe of the place, too. Like, yeah. There are some places that I'll I usually try to prep Corey by saying, OK, <laughs> we're getting there here. We're getting there this early so that we can shoot the rooms and probably go get another hotel based on the reviews. Mm. But if we get there and it actually is really clean and it's clear that the things I look for are like. Can you tell that they vacuumed? Can you tell that the tub has been at least wiped down? Can you tell that there are clean sheets? Like, I just kind of look for those signs. And if it feels like it's good enough, then I'm going to sleep there. Sometimes I regret it because I lay there at two in the morning and I can't sleep because it's just like, Mm -hmm. it feels like you're in a weird old dungeon sometimes, (laughs) like these dark, musty rooms. Mm. But yeah, I really just look for kind of some basic signs of like, did they put in the effort? Because also... There are a lot of gross things about every hotel room. So, mm-hmm. again, even like the nicest it. places aren't yeah. the cleanest. Right. Like people are always commenting, like, do you know how gross these rooms are? Do you know what gross things people do in these rooms? And I'm like, every hotel people are it doing is true. gross things. Mm-hmm. So I try not to think that much about like what activities are being done in there, but also try to take enough precaution that I'm not going to later walk away and be like, oh, I wish we didn't stay there because now I feel gross or I didn't sleep or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we we probably have lower standards than most of the people that we like hang out with because people will always say, do you recommend going? And I'm like, well, who's asking? <laughs> do I love it? Yes. Would I tell a lot of people that I know to go? No, because a lot of people have a lot higher standards for the higher standards for what they want in like a vacation. So they're like, mm. you know, they want room service and a fluffy robe. And these places are like going to be a really uh, sexy, fun experience if you can get into it, and a really scary nightmare if you're not into it. <laughs> totally, yeah. I I feel like the I feel like rooms carry so much energy too. Like it's interesting um, walking into a room and feeling like you're like something doesn't feel right in here. Like yeah. is this place haunted? Yeah. Like I've had that at a lot of places totally. that I've stayed in. Yeah. And then some places just feel like light, but like you can just feel like. Talk about, like, the different energies that you've felt walking into these places. I mean, I think even... Sorry, I'm talking too much. Please. Do you want to talk talk about the energies? (laughs) I mean, for me, it's... uh, If there's too many people hanging out in the parking lot or hanging out in the lobby, then I just, like... I don't like that. That's so funny, hanging out in the parking lot. Which which happens... Like a party place, place, you mean. Yeah. Yeah, we're not really party people. We kind of want to be left alone. (laughs) Basically, every time we've gone to a hotel... We exclusively hang out at the hotel. Like we don't go around the town and find oh really fun things to do. It's just not a norm because like we yeah. spend so much time trying to get what we do that doing anything else other than being in that space is just not worth our time usually. Mm-hmm. So like it's always interesting to have there be the experiences where there's people that are just hanging out in lobbies or parking lots because it usually just feels like. I don't know. It's a it's a party space. Like yeah. people people party in the rooms or they're going out or they're like it, it's it's a yeah, it's like a I'm sure they're friendly and a community vibe, but we're not necessarily there to like yeah. meet people and hang out and go out. We're there to like experience the rooms and you know, not yeah, not be like I don't I it feels mean to say we don't want to be bothered. No, but like not we, at all. But like we're we are working. So yeah. also it's like, yeah, that that can be a little annoying if it's like a crowded space. But uh, I mean a lot of these places are are pretty empty. I think the energy thing for me, like I might not always be able to explain in the moment why I do or don't want to stay in a room, mm-hmm. but it's totally the energy thing mm-hmm. where like I mean there are hotels that like I mean there's one in Chicago that we slept in that later I was like questioning like it, it was pretty dirty like why did it was I okay sleeping there but like it just felt fine and like everything about the experience energetically mm-hmm. felt fine and even like the the Poconos resorts I know people who don't want to stay there because they're like I just it's old like there's mm-hmm. no way you can clean a carpet from the 80s and I'm like but it feels like a fun yeah getaway that totally. like isn't it's not you're going there for that. Yeah. like it, That's it the just, purpose. It just feels fine. So, uh, again, all the time I'll say, like, I have to wait to see how I feel when I get there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we're going to stay the night. And then I wait and see how it feels. Mm-hmm. What about haunted rooms? I mean, we, we have stayed at a haunted hotel. Knowingly? 
Uh, yeah. Yes. Because they had a heart shaped tub. So I was like, <laughs> well, we have to check it out. I mean, okay, I didn't know. I knew it was haunted, but we stayed there and I was like, honestly, nothing about it felt that haunted except that it's like weird and old and little scary. I don't know. None of that stuff works for me. Like, I, I'd rather be haunted than like annoyed. Like, I, <laughs> like, I'm I, like haunted just does it doesn't do anything for me. But like, if you've gone to a haunted like a haunted house before, those people can be annoying. Like the people that are like <laughs> that are running. So like it's not the hauntedness, it's the fact that they're like in your personal space. And like I just don't want so like I, I felt nothing of the stories of the hauntedness at the haunted place we stayed at. But I on the other hand <laughs> I when I didn't know this until later, but well, when we were walking around the hotel, I was like, let's just see the other I think it's like three stories. And we like walked around the other stories up until we got to the third floor. And we walked around for like two minutes. And I was like, I heard a weird noise and I felt really freaked out for some reason. And I just didn't like it. And so we like ended up going back downstairs. And then with the when we left the next day and posted about it, someone was like, oh, my gosh, if you heard the stories of the third floor. And I was like, <gasps> and I like got chills. And I was like, no, but I got actually freaked out up there. So I decided not to look around anymore because I just I felt this overwhelming bad feeling mm -hmm. so then i was like oh maybe i do believe that it was haunted because i was too freaked out to keep looking around up there but yeah he i don't i don't <laughs> it's funny they say i don't i don't know if it works for you but yeah he's i feel like you just i i would love to hear about you having a haunted experience because <laughs> he's just yeah i don't know i feel like you're worth haunting if anything's <laughs> Yeah, I stayed at this really creepy motel with my husband one time. We were doing stand up and they like put us up in this like shitty place in Fresno area. And it, it was like a party place too. Like it was like really sketchy and shady and like like you know, like girls like crying in the parking lot, like smoking meth on the stairs, like like the doors just open to the rooms, you know yeah. what I mean? Like facing the courtyard, like yeah. a party place. Yeah. When all the rooms face. Yeah. Right? When they face yeah. and they're like open, you could just uh, yeah. like, that's strange. So we like wanted to stay in our room, you know, like kind of like protect ourselves in a way. And then the room was like ice cold and you could feel like this weird energy. And then we were watching TV and every single time we turned the channel, it was like death demons like evil like, like it just kept saying something over and over again like every time we hit it we shut off the tv and like the iron on the carpet like flew down like that and then we're like we're not going to google it until we leave and then we left and sure enough like read all this stuff oh yeah um and it really freaked us out yeah i, I don't really want to have those experiences. like i can't sleep in those <laughs> yeah spaces no and i feel like i if i know something feels like that energy again i like just don't want to sleep there because i mm -hmm. know that i'll be freaked out by stuff like that you do you feel like a lot of these older places have like really firm mattresses or like too soft like can we get a good mattress at these places <laughs> that's a good question I feel like I'm always so tired when we finally get to go to bed after shooting, backing things up, trying to get that I like I barely Doesn't remember the you. sleep experience. There's still have been some mattresses that have like coils that are coming out the edges. Sure. <laughs> some mattresses are dangerous. Um, I feel like usually they're kind of worn and a little lumpy, but sometimes they're good. The Sybaris hotels have very hard mattresses. Like the what? Sybaris? The Sybaris. Uh, the, um, it's like the private pool rooms in the midwest mm. they're like a small chain out there and they i know i'm sure it's on purpose because we've slept at a few of them and they are the hardest mattresses which i'm sure is like part of their their thing but mm -hmm. but normally i don't know do you go to like any of the cute little diners or restaurants attached to some of these places we try yeah, when they're to. attached for sure that feels like a they're very of like david lynchy yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 we we love a diner so uh, especially when there's one attached to the place like with the restaurant the madonna mm -hmm. it's awesome. yeah oh yeah yeah it's we tried to fit in like doing the all copper the, cafe the, like yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we do like to do any of the activities that the hotel has to offer. And if they don't and we actually can go out, we'll definitely look for like an old diner mm -hmm. or, or a Chipotle if you're really needing a taste of <laughs> normalcy. Have you been to the Apple Motor Inn? Mm -mm. It's not. Um, it's in San Luis Obispo as well. It's not like it, they have like cute rooms, but it's not like um, it's more like. Victorian kind of interesting but they have like a really cute diner it's, it's oh. like a vibe you know some places are just like a cute vibe yeah too. what's it called Apple Motor Inn Apple Motor Inn yeah you guys stayed at the place um that's on 
your way essentially to Madonna in. It starts with a Y and it has like a Elvis, like kind of oh fifties, like oh, oh, you sleep in a car. Victorian Vic. Mansion. Is, oh, it, yeah, the, Victorian, Victorian Mansion. Victorian, yes, I, yes, yeah. yes. And it's Los Alamos. Oh, is that, that okay? Yeah. Yes, I don't know why I thought the city was or town was with a Y. Um, I mean, there's also you might... Santa Ynez. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. How is that place? I'd always wanted to go there. Is it worth? I feel like it was really nice. I think it was really clean. They bring you a breakfast in the morning. Like, it's mm-hmm. like a bed and breakfast vibe. So it was very... Yeah. I thought it was really nice. Yeah. One of the better 50s rooms we've stayed in, for sure, too. Yeah. It's it's cute. It's clean. I thought it was very fun. Are there any common themes that you see across, like you said, one Definitely. of the 50s? Like, yeah. fi- what, what do you guys see, like, throughout? Probably some of the most consistent ones we see are some sort of, like, honeymoon something. So, like, a... Uh, like a cupid related red sort of theme that's a, a very common reoccurrence some sort of underwater or seashell something that happens a lot uh some sort of egyptian type theme so like sand or pyramids or uh like the tombs that's a common reoccurrence one 50s is is, is very common as well too space a lot of space, space rooms and a cave, cave. a lot of yes yeah. i love cave rooms yeah very dark and those yeah. are probably some of the most common in the jungle mm-hmm. uh, rainforest mm-hmm. or jungle i think those are the, probably the yeah. main but yeah you see those all over the country which is pretty interesting did you see sand on the ground of the room no oh, okay i wish <laughs> they usually painted like on the mural oh yeah yeah, like yeah 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 I don't think we've seen sand in a room no. yet. Cool. Even in the beach room, we've seen a beach room where like the the entire room is mural to look like you're at the beach, but no sand. So. What about in the more sex focused places? Like with the sw- like what's the weird equipment you've come across and yeah. furniture? That's usually some sort of like sex chair situation mm-hmm. or sex swing. So if you look if you look in some of these rooms that you can either rent by the hour or are just sort of for that sort of clientele. If you look on the ceiling, you can usually see, like, a hook. And I thought that's... you were going to say a camera. No. <laughs> Hopefully not. But if you Unless see, you brought your own. If you see a hook in the ceiling, it's it's usually because you can look in the closets and find a sex swing, <gasps> and then you can hook up onto that. Oh. Uh, so... Like, do you think they clean that swing? I don't know, but the... Okay, again. At the Sybris, the Sybris they, which... put, they put a label on it like you see on toilets that says this thing Sanitize? has been sanitized. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah. I actually believe that they clean theirs because they're they're for, like, older Midwest couples and everything there feels like it's, like, like at a hospital sanitized, like, really quite nice. Yeah. What kind of weird... Okay, so there's swings, there's... There's, like, that chair that looks kind of like a spider that... Um, I don't know what you actually call it, but... If that's a, I feel like we see that now. Yeah, usually, more often. some sort of uh, like wedge that kind of looks like mm. a piece of gymnastics equipment mm-hmm. that when you're learning how to do a backflip for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I think probably the weirdest thing we've seen, at least to me, and I can, will never stop thinking about it, was like there's a tub in Miami that has like a sex toy kind of built in. Like I was Whoa. like, oh, like touching it. Like what's this piece of rubber button thing? Like right on the seat. Like it would be like up my butt if I sat down. And Corey was like. No, like that's literally to sit on. And I was like, oh, I wish I hadn't touched it. Like a dildo? Like it can vibrate if you turn it on. Like it was like a sex tub. Like it, I, I'm, I'm still. Wait, but was it like a dildo? It wasn't that big. It was like this big just sticking out and you could like turn it on, but I didn't. And put it inside? I mean, you could sit on it and like. I, I that's assume, so. Gross. I don't know why else you would have a vibrating button. Yeah, I there was no instruction for. manual, so we're not. Entirely but it was also <laughs> on the the chair that they called the wet chair because it was half in the tub. So it's like a sex chair. Yeah, half yeah, in yeah. The tub. It also had a thing that you could sit on. That I was like, oh my gosh, this is wild because, I I I, I sex chair. Okay, fine, but like, a, a shared toy feature. Like I. That was too far for me. It would be helpful if some of that stuff was explained. Yes, of course. Because it's like they expect us to know how to use that. And some of the stuff is so out there. Yeah. That it's like, where does the leg go? Like, I know. I do feel like they should have a manual. What are these manual. straps for? Yeah. They should have a manual. Something with illustrations so that it's it's less graphic. Just like a line drawing of yeah. how to use it. <laughs> Anything I feel like would be helpful because people always will ask if they see us post like a chair or something. Hey, just wondering like how do you actually use this? Like slide into our DMs and like you just try stuff. Do you? Like, you I have to. What? I would. I mean, you would. What? You guys did it. Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. But also <laughs> I, when people are like, "Did you figure it out?" I'm like, 
well, we used it, but also I don't know if I was doing it right. Or if, yeah. Like, I don't know. It's a weird... it's all part of the fun. Yeah. I think that's what it's for. Yeah. It's for adventure. What's the grossest thing? Why is this fly like on my face? <laughs> it's been on my face. Oh, no, don't call me. What's the grossest thing that you've ever come across? Like, have you ever walked in a room and been like, oh, my God, no, 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 no. Like, not staying in here. Like, no. Probably just to use condom on yeah. the ground. Yeah. Right? That's like. Yeah. Yeah. That but was... that was one of those situations where the maids gave us access. So I was like, yeah. I know. I, I was like, I'm not going to put them on blast and be like, we found a used condom because the the ladies were so nice to be like, yeah, you can look in the rooms we haven't cleaned yet. And then I was just like, oh, people are the worst. They really just like throw their trash on the ground. <laughs> that really sucks to have to be a maid mm-hmm. at like a sex yeah. motel. Yeah. Have you ever stayed at any? My friend told me one time she went to a place and it was like, there was like a rubber mattress and you get covered in baby oil and like fuck on it. Like, have you ever seen any weird stuff like that? That We went to a swingers hotel and we <gasps> aren't swingers, but there, we went to the playroom and there are like gymnastic mats that you can like meet Whoa. someone. Whoa. It's a playroom. So there's naked people everywhere that are just like meeting and hooking up. And, and... some people with scorecards. Wait, what are scorecards? No, I, I was saying because of gymnastics. Oh. <laughs> You're no, so into but... gymnastics. <laughs> He's very into gymnastics. Are you a gymnast? No. My <laughs> sisters were the oh, okay. <laughs> He's just jealous. I've been to the meets. Yeah. No, at the at the swingers hotel it was really interesting because again, we're not swingers, we don't know the culture. What state was that? Uh, Colorado. Colorado. Okay. But like before you walk into the public room, you can choose to like wear a bracelet that tells everyone like, are you here alone? Are you looking to hook up with someone? Are you looking to hook up as with a third or just like meet a new person? Like there's like a whole chart of bracelets <laughs> and a whole line of buckets of bracelets just so like immediately everyone knows like why you're there. We yeah. Wore the bracelets that said, please leave us alone. Really? That's so funny. I bet people have like every bracelet. <laughs> like they're just like the artist pass at Coachella. Oh, seriously. They're just like here for oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People are very out there. But it was it was kind of nice and educational to see like how. I would love to go to that just for people watching. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, that would be so interesting. I think they you would could... really like that too. I know. No, because like, yes. Yeah. There are those people who are those like. Yeah. Well, I know a voyeur would be watch. That's watching someone, right? I thought that's when you want to be watched. Oh, is it? Which one is it? I look to John. (laughs) I hope he knows. Voyeur is is watching other people, at least using that word. I'm not sure. And then, yeah, okay. And then the people who want to put on are, yeah. What's that? I thought the, I don't know. Yeah, but that is like a thing. And that's like their kink. Like they want to be, it's always some like weird old man. There who just is like naked, there, yeah, yeah. There, and just wants to be naked. There's a pretty good spread of all sorts of people uh, that ages were in there. And, and, there. Yeah. Yeah, Any was... attractive people at those places? No, I didn't look long I mean, enough. Yeah, to... we... really <laughs> honest answer. Come on, guys. I know, really. Like I, I look at who we are, and then to go into a room where people are. Are you looking like, up voyeur? Are like naked <laughs> and and okay. Oh my god, that's goodness. helpful. Oh, thank you. People, okay, so voyeurism is an interest in observing. Okay, so they want to watch people, but who are the people who like, who like oh, exhibitionists? Watched. That's, That's it. That's it. Yep. That's it. Thank yep. you, John. Yep. <laughs> so you can find all of that crowd there for sure. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of those. Um, I know there's like a lot of those like nude resort type yeah. places. I remember they went to one in The Simple Life. Yeah, like nu- uh, what, nudist resort. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. Have you guys been to a place like that? We haven't. We've been to nude beaches. Yeah, okay. but not the yeah, resorts. Yeah, been there. Also, yeah, I, I don't know why we haven't. I don't know. Like the nude thing, like nudist resorts for some reason is weird to me, whereas like swingers aren't weird to me. I don't mm. know why that is. So did you see people like fucking? Yeah. Like what did you guys see there? This ev- is so ev- interesting. All sorts of things that I was not prepared to see. <laughs> like I love, okay, I haven't, we haven't put out the episode yet, but we have this video that we will put out about it, like our review. And I I laughed so hard when I saw the edit because we're like on camera, like we're about to go to the playroom and like see what that's like. And then the <laughs> next shot is like, um, and I'm not trying to be like anything. I was just like, um, yeah, I mean, we, we saw some things. Like, I clearly am, like, overwhelmed because I was not prepared to see, like, multiple people either just pleasuring themselves or having sex mm-hmm. with someone. Like, it was just so shocking. Yeah. So it, it was it was an experience. We did not stay in that room very long because I was too overwhelmed to, like, be able to just hang out while people were doing that. Like, right. Was, How weird would that be, though, if you were just hanging out? Like, I'm so going to have nice. a breakfast and, like, a coffee and just watch I those, could, I that just couple couldn't. fucking. Yeah. I could like I couldn't hang out and just be chill, even though again, like literally just like naked people would walk by and be like, What's up? Like super nice. Yeah. But I'm like, I can't even say hi. I like, totally. Yeah. So 
we didn't uh, we didn't stay long. I don't blame you. I mean, it, it would I would be so uncomfortable. Yeah, I would be it, so it uncomfortable. Was, I was like, okay, good to know this isn't my thing. I'm glad I checked. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't my thing. But, the but rooms I think there, I'd also be fascinated. It yeah. is fascinating. And the rooms there are amazing. So I really? do recommend going, even if it's just like for a mm-hmm. couple hours. They're vintage, like amazing bed pieces that have to be yeah. from the 70s or 80s. Like beautiful. So cool. So I recommend it. Yeah. The 80s, I feel like has, I think that's my favorite like era for hotel hotel room stuff. They have good, good decor in that yeah. era. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went to a sex party in L.A., and it How was, was it? just like it um it was just like weird. I don't know. Like I I I feel like none of those people are hot. They're just all just like weirdos. I mean sorry, I time. sound like a bitch. <laughs> I'm knocking on wood as if it takes away what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's like a lifestyle thing. Mm-hmm. And some people I feel like want to have sex because there's like a sexual attraction and like a, a physical attraction, and then some people are like that they want to connect in that way and it's not about that attra- like it's it's such a different mindset and you're right mm-hmm. like it's not like people are just trying to be hot and like meet at a club it's like it wasn't what i thought it would yeah, be like it wasn't like a mo- it wasn't like a movie it was no, it was just too usually. real yeah it yeah. it's very real in the moment yeah yeah I were there know. snacks there were and there was a chick laying down naked with sushi on top which i felt like was hacky yeah it's I mean, like come on we've seen this only sushi know. with the naked leg i know <laughs> Yeah, why not like a why not like a cheese board or a meat a meat tray? Sure, charcuterie. Yeah, well, I know. Why is it always sushi? Mm. It's like I don't want to eat fucking tuna off this bitch's pussy. Sorry, right? but like make it something else. Well, maybe someday we'll progress in that. that yeah, hmm. that's so funny. Wow. So if you're gonna be planning a trip, like if you're giving advice to a couple who wants to travel around, go to rooms, like what do you think? What's your advice for like? a weekend of fun to someone, Mm. how they can plan their own mini trip. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to like a fantasy hotel, I think just getting into the fantasy, you know, like bring outfits that match the theme, like be willing to try something new and fun. And yeah, I don't know. It's and, just lean in. Mm-hmm. And just order a pizza. I mean, what's better than <laughs> having a pizza in a hotel room? Don't plan on going anywhere else necessarily. Like, just enjoy your time there. Mm-hmm. Enjoy who you're with or enjoy being alone, whatever the situation is. But definitely outfits. That was that was definitely a, a good change we started doing. Yeah, this. and I think even just, like, communicating beforehand with, like, what your expectations are. So saying, like, let's say one of you really wants to get photos in your cute outfit before you get down to business. Mm-hmm. Like, say that on the front end so you know you're planning. I really want to make sure I get shots of this if that's something you're into so that you don't feel like you wasted the opportunity. But then totally. also just like and the hair planning. Makeup. Yeah. Pre-plan. Like, what do you mm-hmm. want to do there? And one of the reasons I, I – people wonder why we're not grossed out by, like, hourly rental places. But I think I really like the idea that – I get, like, stressed out with the pressure of things. So if you walk into a room and there's, like, a sex chair and a sex wing and you're like, I only have one night, I don't know, and then you kind of get overwhelmed. I kind of like the idea that if you're going somewhere for sex, you're like, we don't need all night. We know what we want to do. We're going to get to it. And, like, so, yeah, planning your your sex capades down to a little bit of scheduling just Mm -hmm. so that you know kind of, like, what you want to get out of it. Yeah. And bring bubble bath. Oh, really? Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Do you travel with bubble bath? Yeah. Yeah, almost always. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. Do you have any tips for getting good photos in rooms? Like if you're going to do a fun photo shoot Hmm. in a room, you want to go there to do content. Well, they're usually pretty dark. So part of it is knowing how to shoot in the dark, whether it's with a flash or, you know, opening all the windows, Mm -hmm. letting light Yeah. Yeah, I think we try to do a couple different things. One is we try to get there before dark. So if there is a window, it can get some of those pretty brighter shots. And then if there's no window, I really just lean into like that like flash, uh, like using like a point and shoot or something, something that has a brighter flash, but it looks it has that vibe that feels a little bit like old. Um, mm-hmm. Like old. film. Yeah, like it has that vibe instead of – because. Unless you bring in professional equipment, you're not going to light the whole room. So you might as well lean into the fact that it's like a little more grunge and like kind of just have fun with it. But yeah, we try not to bring a ton of equipment, but I bet the rooms would look really cool if they were well lit. But if Mm -hmm. they're not, even just bringing 
a single light that you can use to like make sure you're lit is kind of all you can really do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you just kind of have to play with what you have. Some of the rooms have cool mood lighting that Mm. you can play with, but Mm -hmm. some of them are just dark. Yeah. What sucks is like when you go with someone who's not good at taking pictures. That is hard. (laughs) It's like, I'll, I'll just fucking do it myself with the timer. I mean, that's, like, the fear. Going to, like, a yeah. really great place and yeah. you have your cute outfit my husband can't find the angle. And yeah. I'm like, come on. I mean, that's still... I'm a, a great photographer, of, of so, like, it's so annoying that he can't take the same photos of me that I can take. I totally feel that. I mean, part <laughs> of the reason I have a lot of photos of him in the rooms are because I'll want to set up the shot myself. Yes. And I'll get the photos of him, and then I'll be like, okay, now we switch. And he'll, like, look at the angle and see what how it's cropped, and, like, he'll take mm-hmm. the same photo. Because it's not even that he's not a good photographer, because he's a great photographer, but I still have the vision of, like, yeah. exactly what I want and what I'm wearing and how I want to be shown. So I... We'll just have to like set that up for him mm-hmm. and then he just takes what I took. And then once he gets the shot, I'll be like, okay, now you can take whatever photos you want. Whenever I have a stranger take a photo, I always send up the framing because Sorry. they're not going to like, I'm like, okay, hold it exactly here. I you know. see that and that there? Like, okay, yep. that's on the yep. sides there. Like, because otherwise it's going to be some awful angle. Yeah. It's it's true. And I, I've encouraged a lot of my friends who will like be going to one of the hotels or they're going on vacation with some guy and they're like, what should I do for photos? I'm always like, get this tripod, get mm. this, this can you timer. Na- do clicker. you know anything off the top of your head you can name? We've got it for- linked in. We have it. Oh, great. We have like yeah, a list of remember. It's products. Like, and stuff. Oh, B size or something. Yeah. So is that on your website link? We've got it Under. on our, we have like a merch store. Okay, we have great. have a tab on there that's like all the stuff. I think stuff it's the we... link tree that I have like mm-hmm. in our mm-hmm. bio. Yeah. And I think we have like an Amazon list or something. Of oh, that's perfect. Yeah, okay. if you go to the link in bio, you'll see it all. Mm-hmm. But yeah, depending on how serious someone is about taking the photos, I'll say either start with the iPhone tripod and the timer. And then if you want to get something a little more like with a bigger flash, we have these little point and shoot cameras that are super easy to use and like have great flash. And then all the way up to like, a DSLR if you're like really going mm-hmm. for some more intense photos but I feel like you can get something great with any of it if you're willing to just like get a little creative with mm-hmm. how the room is but yeah if I want to get like a cool like filmy vibe would I get like a point and shoot like I don't know anything about cameras specifically yeah. but I can take the picture once I have the camera yeah I like think what the should point I and shoot I like that for the film vibe because mm-hmm. it's a little less high quality than like an actual DSLR yeah. camera and has that flash that feels kind of like a one-time use camera mm-hmm. so it kind of has that like party feel yes to yes it. that's it's, what i like yeah so i do that and then you can always add like grain and a filter that even oh, okay, brings that yeah. out even more but i love the point like what camera do i get it's a sony is it the rx 100, rx 100 yeah. sony rx 100. it's a great it's a great I'm just writing it down it's a great camera for for these okay. types of uh shoots so yeah i think that one i really like again because it's so user friendly yeah and Yeah, I also tell people to practice before they get into a room if they're going with, like, a -hmm. romantic partner that they want to take photos of them. Because I've had a couple friends be like, it was so hard to get into it. And, like, I just feel like they weren't capturing it. And I was like, well, do you know what angles you look good from? And they were like, well, no, but, like, why didn't he figure it out? And so I try to say, like, figure out what your angles are before you're handing the camera Mm -hmm. over. So you can tell them. It sounds like you know, like, how to tell them what Mm -hmm. you want. And that's very... So it's helpful to be able to verbalize what you want because a lot of the time they want to do their best, but they might not actually know <laughs> how, how until you tell them. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just communicate. What do you think it is about hotels and traveling that does create a lot of excitement or like refreshment in relationships? Because hmm. like, you know, everyone's always like, oh, yeah, like go on vacation. You guys will like get it back mm-hmm. or like. You always hear people talk about how they had great sex on, like, a trip. Yeah. Like, what do you think that is? I mean, I just feel like it's stepping out of your life for a minute. And, like, it just, like, in a way, stepping out of all your day-to-day problems. Like, it's just this new world. Like, especially if it's a fantasy room, you're trying to get away. You're mm-hmm. trying to see each other in a new setting and, like, a mysterious setting. And, like, I don't know. It just feels so stepping out of Mm -hmm. the day-to-day does that still feel exciting too for you guys are you used to it now like if I went to like a themed room with my husband you know it immediately feel like 
ooh, like this is going to be like a fun sex adventure. But like, has it become more of a norm now? I mean, yeah, especially when we're there and we know we have like a shot list. Mm -hmm. It's it has totally switched to like a work thing. Yeah. But we, especially the ones that we're going to stay overnight, I try to like, okay, we also do want to enjoy it. So we try to like get everything done and be able to enjoy it a little bit. But there are so many that I'll be like, when we actually have time off, we should totally come back here and really enjoy it. And like, of course, we're like always busy. But yeah, I think I obviously still find the appeal because I still want to see more and go to them. But I think it's like a... It totally depends on the day if we actually have time to enjoy it or if we're just like doing the shot list. And that's also what's been nice about returning to places that we've been to before is we're not so concerned with like trying to capture everything this time around because we already have. So Mm -hmm. it's nice to just get to enjoy like a normal person. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've gone back to a couple. What um, are some of those places? I mean, we like... We went back to the Poconos a couple times Mm -hmm. because now I'm just obsessed. And so now, basically, once we have, like, a YouTube video out about a hotel, I'm like, okay, great. Like, now we can go back and enjoy it. Um, So we've gone back to the Poconos a couple times. We've gone to the Idaho place, the Black Swan Inn with, like, the shell bed. We've gone there a couple times. Um, We've gone to the Sybaris Hotels a couple times. And, again, like, they're not themed. They're just sexy and cool, and I love them. So I'm sure we'll go back there again. Um, I don't know if we've gone to that many others more, more than once. I guess we went to the Miami. There's a Miami chain called the Executive Hotels, and we've gone to, like, multiple of their hotels now, but they're the ones who have, like, the the spider chair and the weird stuff. But, like, I think once, yeah, once we kind of have already captured it, it gives us the freedom to be like, yeah, I want to get a couple photos, but, like, that's it. Now we can just actually hang out. And, yeah. So, yeah, I think I still really like it, and... And feel like as much as I've already like seen it all in a sense, there's still like, I don't know, you're different every time you go to these places and you've Mm. changed. And like, I don't know, I still think it's a cool, fun way to connect and like be in a private space that is, yeah, just for you two or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you guys always travel with for the room? Like in addition to like bubble bath, disinfectant, like I like to bring a candle to rooms and like I always just feel like it makes it like really homey yeah. I don't know it's like a thing I like to do I love that idea I've brought a couple candles on our trips before and sometimes they melt in the car <laughs> and um, on one of our recent trips I in one of the hotels that said no candles I spilled wax on the carpet and I was like panicking because I'm never someone who like leaves damage in a theme hotel Thankfully, I don't know how Corey knew this, but he like knew to lay down a piece of cotton over it and iron it. What? Thankfully, hotels when I was, have iron. When I was in college, somebody spilled a candle on the floor and they were freaking out. And the super sweet, like nice janitor was like, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. He takes out a towel and takes an iron and just runs it across it. And the, that then reheats up the wax and just soaks up into the towel and just completely gets rid of it. Oh my god! So you were freaking out. I was. You, were, you thought you freaking everything. out because it was like a nicer hotel, and I was yeah. like, oh "Gosh, this is horrible." And most hotels already have irons in them, anyways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's like, "No, no, no, just hold on, I'll do that." And oh, all wow. the wax is gone, hundred percent. And I was like, "How did you do that?" So yeah. Anyway, now I am too scared to use candles. One of the um, only good things I learned in college. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's that's true. such an interesting tip. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so now I don't now I don't bring candles as much, but I think, yeah, try to bring a costume or an outfit that feels right with the room. Bubble bath, disinfectant. I don't know. Is there anything else besides a camera that, that we try to bring? We try to bring a drink that also is like, even if it's not alcohol, just like something that you're like, what do I want if I'm like in the tub later? Oh, that's just fine. Just so that we don't have to go. Like, we like to minimize how often we have to go out mm-hmm. once we're there. Because you kind of, like, break the spell a little bit. I've liked when you've gotten, like, a bouquet of flowers at the grocery store that then you just put in the tub. That you yeah, just, like, it's like untouched. floating flowers. Ooh. Like, it just feels mm-hmm. so cute. Yeah. So, yeah, I like that. And then did you open a place in the desert? Or no. Or creating a place? Yeah, we, during the, like, kind of lockdown part of 2020, we um, know people who bought a place in the desert, and they were working on it. And Is that the like, Trixie? No, no. Oh. This was uh, the Rainbow Mode. No, okay. Not, it's not even a motel. Rainbow Getaway. It's the Rainbow Getaway. Thank yes. you. I was like, wait, what is it called? Um, so, yeah, we worked with them to, like, help them create mm. themed rooms. So we ended up actually doing, like, the house, which we didn't plan on doing the whole house. But 
I mean, it was 2020. There was a lot of like no travel. Yeah. And, like, it was weird work situation. So yeah, we ended up kind of going all out and it was, it was fun to get to kind of create these spaces. But then also really sad because then we left it behind and haven't seen it since. So oh, I'm I thought like, that was your place. No, so we'll you get like make a place. We we definitely want to, and I mean we bought a place in Michigan or consult at least. Yeah, yeah, I think we want to kind of do more of that, like making our own spaces. So I think we will, but we've just been kind of getting to that point where yeah. we feel ready to. But I think we will. Why Michigan? Just because we both really like Michigan. It feels like a getaway. It's really close to some of the most beautiful beaches mm. and. It's just like, yeah, it's a getaway. It's like kind of in a woodsy area, but also our families are still in the Midwest and it's, I mean, they're in Wisconsin and Illinois, but we wanted to be close, but not like so close that when we're there, it feels like we're neighbors. So yeah, I think it's just somewhere we still like to have time away and it is somewhere that I think would be so fun to turn into like a, a rentable getaway for when we're not there because it's like, it feels like a little wonderful cabin getaway so So cute have you been to hicksville Mm -hmm. is it worth going to yeah i I think so it's a it's a really quirky i know there's two there's hicksville trailer park yeah and then there's hicksville pines we've done hicksville pines and it's 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 like a niche place for Mm -hmm. sure even within the category of themes it's like niche on its own but they have a really beautiful heart tub, and I, we love their honeymoon room. It has, like, mirrored okay. ceilings. They have yeah. a water bed. Like, it's it's still – even though it, it feels a little bit, like, cabin woods, like, glamping a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, like, luxury. It's still, like, really interesting, cool rooms. And um, what's there? I always think about they have also a shower that's an upside-down bidet, and I always think huh. that's, like, the weirdest – yeah, coolest things. That so, is cool. Yeah, they just have some really weird, quirky, and also I think they're they're building out more and more of their cafe area, which is looking really cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's, it's okay. A cool I'm place. trying to think about the places closest <clears throat> to Los Angeles. Yeah, that's definitely one of the closest. And then yeah, the, the Victorian Mansion and the the Madonna Inn. I'm trying to think if there's anything. Oh, Castlewood Cottages. Have you ever been there? No. Oh, is that the one in Big Bear? Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, they have some pretty wild large yes cabins. i've heard about yeah okay they're they have a really good castle one that's like three stories yeah. and very castle-y Ooh, so yeah okay. check that one out that's a good one awesome but yeah that might be the the closest um to la i'm trying to find a hotel that will let us like put a hard tub in one of the rooms mostly because i don't want to have to go far if we need to shoot something in a hard tub i'm so sick of yeah. having to like go to the Mustang or like somewhere far away. So I'm like trying to find a hotel that's going to be like, sure, you can design a suite for us. And like, that would be so cool. So if anyone's listening who owns a hotel, I'm figuring that out. Yeah. I I think you guys would be so amazing at that because you've had so much experience with traveling around that like you should totally interior design a place. We're definitely trying to again figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be really fun. So we'll, we'll see what we can what we can figure out. That's so but cool. I'm always like looking for like heart tubs or anything mm-hmm. that we could get to try to convince someone to let us <laughs> do their space. So we'll see. Love it. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you yeah, for having course. us. And then can you just shout out your social media and anything else you want to put out there? Yeah. Um, our handles are all a pretty cool hotel tour. And uh, we put out YouTube videos of the hotels but also we just post a lot on like instagram sometimes on tiktok if we're not being punished and (laughs) yeah i think that's pretty much it we also have on our website a map of all the places that we've been to oh yeah we have a patreon that we include like actual reviews so if someone's like hey i really want to actually go on like a road trip and stay at these places we have a patreon where we include reviews but also like the map of the u.s so you can see like pinpoint kind of where you want to go and then see if it's actually worth staying Mm -hmm. so that's kind of been a good way for us to be able to answer because obviously people want to know immediately like they are like can you plan our road trip and i'm like use this link i love that that's smart we we also tag all the locations in all of our photos but Mm -hmm. the the map just makes a little more convenient for Mm -hmm. for some specific yeah totally yeah cool thank you yeah thank you so much okay bye